changing. So it's really interesting times to, to watch the kind of juxtaposition of this enormous hope in the country and people excited and, and so spirited and, and all this uncertainty. So that's kind of a preamble of where, where we are. Um, when I look at Obama and you watch him, and this gets you the photographic uh, pictures, my, my colleague Deborah Willis, um, who co-authored the book, she says that, you know, you've never seen a bad picture of Obama. And I, and I thought that's almost right. I, if you look at all of the photographs, we probably examined like 5,000 of them. Deb did. I didn't see all 5,000. But when we put together this book, uh, and I'll give you a little background about how it came together. In examining like 5,000 photographs, I think there were not any that really were what you would call bad pictures. You know, like the kind that we all take, you know, at the picnics and the family out, and people say, oh, don't, don't, don't look at that picture, and that's a bad picture. You hardly ever see that with Obama, uh, no matter where you catch him. And, and as a public figure, people are catching him everywhere. I mean, most of us, when, we, when pictures are taken of us, they're posed pictures. They're not too often where we're taking pictures, where people just taking pictures candidly, but well, sometimes they are. But but mostly, you know, we're posed, we get the chance to look good, do our best to look <laughs> But you know, as a politician, someone for president, they're taking them every time. They're taking him, you know, every, they capture everything, you know, might even sit down and eat some spaghetti, you know, they, they're catching them, but you never see a bad picture of this guy. Um, I don't know if that says something about him, um, I, I know he, Certainly, like, like most of us, you know, has a range of emotions. He, he's, he's probably the coolest president I've ever seen. You know, I've been watching, I pay a lot more attention to the photographs now of him than I did before uh, I started working on this book. My role on the book, and I'll kind of tell you how it, it came together, uh, was published by Harper Collins and Don Davis, the editor. Uh, Amistad imprint of HarperCollins is someone that I met when me and my colleague Mike Fletcher were pitching our book on Clarence Thomas and she was very much interested in it. We didn't end up going with that house uh, Doubleday published it, but um, she, we, we knew each other, we would talk from time to time and she called me and I was covering the campaign and it was just in this break between right after Obama and really sold up the nomination in June, that long campaign that you all probably got tired of at some point. She called and said, you know, tell me, we're going to do this photographic book. I've got Deborah Willis, and just please tell me that you will do this. And I thought it was really, and, I, and she said, well, how long do I have? She said, like six weeks. <laughs> I thought it was really an impossible thing to do. For me, because it was covering the campaign, but it was probably the only time that I could have participated in it because it was right before, between the nomination and convention. Um, you know, I was thinking about it, and you know, what they wanted me to do was write an essay, which mine is in the back, which gives kind of the arc of the campaign, just kind of the story of the campaign, five thousand word essay, to write captions. And as writers. It's, that's not really what we do, you know, writing captions and looking at and writing about photography. Um, it's generally not what we do. Um, so that was a, a different kind of, of challenge for me, and it was one of the reasons I wanted to do it. Uh, the other reason was that Deb is somebody I've known. She's done maybe a dozen books, and she's probably one of the, the preeminent uh, historians of American photography, particularly African American photography. And so a chance to work with her was, was really something that I, I welcomed. But we were, you know, I remember sitting down like in my mother's kitchen, mother lives in Capitol Heights, Maryland, and, and when we first got together, we had all of these photographs just spread out, and they were the ones that she was considering using. We had narrowed it down by then. And just looking at the photographs, um, you know, photographs, I think it's one of the things that attracts us to scrapbooks because they're memories that you can keep and they're also, you can come back to photographs and you can see different things in them. They're, they're subject to interpretation. Um, people see different things in the photographs. As Deb would say, you read photographs. 
And, you know, my reading may be different than yours or yours. Uh, what you see in it, I remember there was a photograph early on, it's an Annie Leibovitz photograph that uh, is in Obama's <coughs> office. It's one of the ones up front early in. You know, I never, the thing that I noticed about the photograph, he's in there with Michelle and his daughters. You know, I noticed, the first thing that stood out to me was Muhammad Ali the son, knocking out Sonny Liston. It was that phantom punch, and that was on the wall and down below, just kind of leaning on the, the floor, almost like afterthoughts are these portraits of Abe Lincoln. And, you know, I thought that here's this place where Ali has its prominent place on this wall. And Abe Lincoln, who, as many of you know, has become kind of almost linked inextricably to, to Obama. I mean, there's so much linking with him from, from the books he's reading to the whole team of rivals concept of putting his gathering together. But he has so much linking that he can just have these photographs. It's almost like these are his, you know, 25th and 26th Portraits of Lincoln are just kind of leaning on, on the wall, and you, you have that sense that he has so much Lincoln around him. But others notice, like, there's a book there of Charlotte's Web, and that was a book that was apparently he always kept, he always keeps books so he could read to his daughter. So if they came to the office, he would have something there to read with. It's something that I didn't notice, but, but someone else pointed 